Have you ever wondered about the options and abilities inside of the Color Studio in a Fane Designer? Well, that's what we're here to talk about today. Hi, my name is Ben Nielsen. I'm a media design educator, and today we are going to be taking a deep dive into the Color Studio in a Fane Designer for iPad. We're going to be looking at all of the different options that are present there. Now, we're going to be looking at Affinity Designer for iPad, but the Color Studio is present across all of Affinity's programs, Affinity Designer, Affinity Publisher, and Affinity Photo, across the iPad and desktop versions of those apps. And so the things that we talk about today will apply to most of the other Color Studios as well. So let's go ahead, dive in, and take a look at the Color Studio. So we're looking at the Color Studio in Affinity Designer on the iPad. It's just a little circle in the top right of the Studios toolbar. As we're looking at the Color Studio, you will see there are some different sections. We will go through each one, but if you're wondering why you don't see lots of little squares or circles of color to choose from, that is because you need to tap on the Swatches button at the bottom of the Studio to see those. We will talk more about swatches later in this video, but a lot of people are confused about that, so I just wanted to show it to you right away so you would know where it is. To get out of the swatches view, you hit the swatches in the top left corner. Now, we will just start at the top and work our way down. The first thing you see is where it says color. All the studios tell their name at the top. On the right side, at the top, you see a push pin. That is present in all the studios and allows you to pin the studio so it won't minimize while you are working. Next, you see two circles, which are your fill and stroke selectors. The complete circle represents the fill, and the donut-like circle represents the stroke. They show the color and the fill of the stroke for the currently selected object, or if you have no object selected like I do, they will show the colors that will be used if you make a new object. Whichever one is on top is currently selected and will be affected by changes you make in the color panel. For example, the fill is on top now. If I adjust the color wheel below it, its color will change. If I want to change the color of the stroke, I just tap on the donut circle to bring it to the top. Then adjusting the color wheel will change its color. If you want to swap the colors of the fill and stroke, you can just swipe across them with your finger. On the right side across from these circles is an eyedropper tool. The circle next to the eyedropper tells you what color is currently in the eyedropper. To use the eyedropper to select a color, you tap and hold on it, and then drag across the screen to the color you want to select. A magnifying glass will follow your finger to help you select the correct color. To use the color in the eyedropper tool, just tap the circle. It will go on the fill or stroke depending on what you have selected. Next, you will see the menu that will let you select from different color formula options. Tap on the words to open the menu and scroll through the options. You can choose from any of these to mix the color you want. If you have a specific hex code you want to put in, you can switch to the RGB hex code option, then tap the hex code and a text entry pad will open up. Below the color formula area is the opacity and noise sliders. Opacity defaults to 100% and noise defaults to 0%. If you want to make your object see-through, just bring the opacity down. If you want to add some random noise to your object, just bring that slider up. Noise can be used to add a little bit of texture to an object, but you have no other controls over how the noise behaves, so it has limited use. Below the opacity and noise sliders, you can find two lists of colored circles. The first one is quick colors. I've never found a way to change these, so I think you are stuck with these five, which are no color, black, 50% gray, white, and a blue color. Everything makes sense to me except the blue color, but that is why you see it show up in a lot of my videos because it is easily available. The second list is recent colors. This will show the five most recent colors used in your document. This is very useful if you are working in a limited color palette and you can just reuse them over and over. Now we have made it back to the swatches. So let's dive in and take a look at those. Within the swatches, you will see a lot of the same features that were here before, like the fill and stroke circles, the eyedropper, and the quick and recent colors. But the middle is made up of a swatch set. You can change the view of that swatch set from circles to named bars by tapping the icon next to the name. That set can be changed by tapping on the name and scrolling through the set list. Affinity comes with a standard grayscale palette, a basic colors palette, and a gradient palette, and a lot of Pantone palettes. These can all be very useful, but chances are you will want to make some palettes of your own, especially if you are doing any kind of brand work. To make a palette, you need to tap the little menu button next to the push pin. 
you can choose to add an application palette, which will be accessible across the whole application, or a document palette, which will be accessible only in this document. Let's make a document palette now. Once you have made the palette, it is just called unnamed, and you can name it by going back to the menu and choosing rename palette. You can also get rid of it by choosing remove palette. Now, adding swatches to this palette is a little clunky. You can only do it by tapping the menu and choosing add current fill to palette and you don't have access to any of your color formula options from this part of the studio. So you need to leave swatches, adjust the formula to get the right color, then come back here and add it. Not great. But you do have access to the eyedropper tool, so the fastest way to do this is to bring in a screenshot with your palette, use the eyedropper to sample it, tap the eyedropper color to make it the fill, and then add that fill to the palette. It's not great, but it is faster than tapping on individual hex codes and changing studio windows. The last thing that you need to know is that you can delete and rename swatches by holding down on them. And that's it. You know everything there is to know about the color studio in a Fane Designer. If you enjoyed this tutorial and would like to see more like this, please subscribe and give this video a big thumbs up. If you want to go further with a Fane Designer, check out my courses linked in the description of this video or my playlist linked above. Thanks so much for watching. We'll chat in the comments and I will see you in the next video.